Central Michigan Esports. We welcome you to the Final Four matchup of the Valorant season. I'm here alongside my partner, Devin Edwards. My name is Parker Morrison, and we are set for a great match today. Devin, we have faced the JM, or excuse me, GMU Patriots earlier in the season when Elijah was filling in for Aiden. That's why Sunset didn't go the way that we hoped it would. Very, very rough map for him, but we're back today. We've got our full roster, eight. Or excuse me, Devin, what are, you, what are you expecting out of this team now that we're facing them with Aiden back? Well, it's definitely nice to have full team back. It definitely brings a lot of uh, added benefits. Everyone knows exactly how each other's plays. They know how to back each other up, and it's just going to be very smooth. We saw it last week. Uh, <laughs> they've, they played really well on Lotus, and uh, here we are back again. Hopefully they can finally take back the loss that they had for the week prior. Well, CMU wins this one. They will head to the championship match. And that will be between a tough team, both of which we have faced earlier this season, which will be a matchup for the ages. But let's go through our map bans real quick. CMU hit a quick one on Bind and Icebox. We expected them to ban Sunset, but then again, mm -hmm. that's both teams' best maps now that Aiden is back. And then for GMU, Breeze and Split were the bans for the first map played. is Lotus. CMU is going to be on defense for that one. We've yet to see them in the past couple matches play offense to start any map so yeah. far for the second map it's going to be a set and if needed we'll head to sunset for the third one so cmu looking to finish it out in two try to get those wins because if they head to sunset it is going to be a tough battle as i said it's both teams best maps and it'll be a hard one Devin. i'm sure it'll be an interesting match well when we come back we'll have all the action and more for you here at the student activity center in mount pleasant The final four matchup between Central Michigan Chippewas and George Mason University Patriots. It'll be a good one today, Devin, as we get set for match one in Lotus. We did not see that come out last time that we played GMU as we were the ones to ban Icebox and Lotus. The last time around, they banned Breeze and Ascent. They banned Breeze again, so we can really tell that they don't like <laughs> that map specifically. But this time, they uh, banned Split instead of Ascent. And the Ascent is actually going to be the second map that we will play today. So based off of that knowledge, Ascent's not the greatest map for them. Central Michigan might be able to take one there. 
but we'll start out in Lotus, where Central, the lineup for you, Vanable, Beef Stroganoff, J, Spad, and Wish, where Omen, Cypher, Gecko, Sky, and Raze, respectively. And the last time that we saw GNU, they played phenomenal and top fragged almost, or excuse me, they had a great top fragger in Omen the second round, or, or excuse me, the second game around, and the first one, I believe it was Raze, and their Raze was just alting almost every other mm -hmm. round, and that's where CNU was in the dog pen. There is, they just weren't using their alts, and I think now with Aiden back, we'll be able to see a great improvement in that seven. Yeah, for sure. They're definitely a good team that gets the ball rolling, and it's really hard to recover once they have that many rounds down on you, and they have all that util, all that cash. They can spend it on literally anything. It's You'd never want to be in that situation. Well, we'll see what ends up happening today on Lotus, our first map of the day. We've got 40 seconds until we're underway for the second matchup between these two teams this season. And CMU running the usual lineup for their agents. Jay, the last time around, played Gecko 2AT. Absolute perfection from him. Wish running raves as usual. He is phenomenal at that. And the biggest thing, again, Devin, coming around for the first time against GMU was those abilities. CMU not using them, and GMU capitalizing on that, being able to take advantage of that, winning those rounds based off abilities and information alone. Yeah, for sure. Especially on a map like this, that kind of play style is going to go really well. Well, we are underway for this first match of the final four in this Valorant League. Spad getting a quick few shots off and Intel coming out for GMU. Wusa takes down Spad. Lots of characters for Jay to take out. Why not? And Wusa goes down at the hands of him, but not before a trade off a light slicer. It's a 3v3 on the field right now. Wish gets one on Duracell. A great ghost shot, or excuse me, a great sheriff one shot from him, remaining. but he'll go down at the hands of Light Spike Slicer. Vanable takes him down on the trade. 2v1. Beef Stroganoff holding that angle with the classic. And Vanable also with the classic holding another angle. GMU is going to have to really play this one smart with their omen if they want to get anywhere in this first match. Going to do the door bait. Lo-Fi going back around with the ghost. He has spike, so he's got time. 30 seconds left. Hannibal looking for him now. He'll get tagged up by Beef Stroganoff. Tries to get the camera out just to tag him up. Fakes it out a little bit. He'll get tagged on the way. 20 health for Beef Stroganoff. Lo-Fi is going to come in and try to get him. He's got 10 seconds. Ten seconds Not going to go well for GMU. The plan is getting off. Beef Stroganoff thought it was a fake. But no. Lo-Fi going to clutch it up for GMU. Beef really thought that one was going to be a yeah, fake. No, but GMU with the play. That. Omen ended up full planting that one. Lo-Fi, a great play on his part. 17 health. We can already tell this is going to be a closer matchup than before. For sure. Two Bulldogs coming out second round for GMU. Musa and Wynad. Both with those. And a Spectre for Light Slicer. CMU looking at a save round, try to build up those credits for these upcoming rounds. You know, they are a lot stronger with those rifles than they are these pistols. And I am expecting, as always, to see Wish bring out the op, fifth or sixth round, just to give the team a little bit of a confidence boost. And, Devin, the last time these teams played each other, that did not work out whatsoever. <laughs> but in CMU's last matchup on Wednesday of last week, worked out phenomenally for them. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's always on this map, too. It is, yeah. Jay gonna be right there on door, and as it opens up, he looks to get a couple off. He gets one tag, two tags, and goes down at the hands of a Bulldog from Viper. Spad at 16 now. He's got a retreat. Wish will take out Wusa and what was left of his health. Flanking now is Spad. 16 health, reloads the chamber, goes down at the hands of Light Slicer, who takes two on Spad and Wish. Duracell on Vanable as well. 
29. Now it's being broken off. He'll go down at the hands of Lo Fi for the second time this matchup. 2 0 GMU. You know, not a lot to really expect there. It's a really bad situation to be in. Full classics against those kind of guns. The, just the damage does not stack up. Uh, we're really just hoping to get at least one kill off to get that extra money. Uh, it was a rough round. Full buys coming out for both teams. Devin, what do you expect for CMU to change up here on defense? Probably a faster rotate. I mean, they have full stacks george mason has been on that site ready to go and just the team has been holding off the cnb stroganoff just is holding those angles keeping making sure that nobody's lurking but it's just even if they have the full info they wait well that viper wall proving very effective for gmu not allowing cmu to get intel next to that door duracell takes down cypher's tripwire Vanable gonna go for the flank, gets a couple tags off, sees them. They're gonna full push Vanable here. Smoke and grenades coming out as Lo-Fi starts to plant. Might just throw a couple shots in the smoke to see what it is. Line goes down and takes down Light Slicer. Jay takes down Lo-Fi. Wusan, Jay on the trade. 3v2 on the field right now. Quickly changes to a 2v1 at the hands of Wusan and Vanable. Reloaded the chamber for Omen. Viper is going to have to do another 2v1 clutch. She has four. Can the ace come out for the first time? Bannable has the angle. And Oof. the ace happens. Wusa for GMU makes it three to nothing. Devin, that's the second 2v1 clutch for GMU. CMU just choking right now for lack of better words. I mean, they had it very close there for that second there, but I, they just let it go in the very end. They were doing really well with the teamwork, and they just <laughs> held off on those push. It's really tough. Pushing them one at a time is not what you want to do in that situation, and they're already down so much. Just letting that out is just... Well, Wusa, 7-2, the top fragger for the Patriots right now. That Viper wall, as we mentioned, just... Killing it on the A-side push, and it goes up again there. Looks like it's going to be a distraction, though, as GMU looks to push C. And CMU, the last time around that they played Lotus, Cypher, B. Stroganoff, again there, has C locked down as per usual. GMU is going to learn very quickly that it is going to be hard to take a C push on Central <laughs> when B. Stroganoff has that C-side set up, but... Duracell takes them down in the smoke, and CMU's going to have to scramble to get back to C. Kind of a strange play there. He doesn't normally push up like that. Yeah, that was a little bit of a rush play for Central. Not the greatest decision on Beef Stroganoff's part. Nonetheless, it takes a 4v4 on the field right now. Animal's going to hold that wall angle, and Duracell takes out Spad. Grenades go out, and Wish tries to rush in, and why not? Holds that left-hand angle and a quick one for GMU. That 4v4 turned into a 4v nobody very quickly. Devin, I said it was going to be a closer matchup, but Central Michigan is making these little, little mistakes that are not playing in their favor, really hurting them. Yeah, for sure. I, the money is not there right now, and they're just trying to like save as much as possible. <laughs> well, <laughs> Devin, it's like I... Like I said, it the broadcaster's curse comes out and Wish will buy an operator on the fifth round of this matchup. Hey. This could either go very well or very poorly for them. We'll see how it plays out. He's going to hold that C long sight. Omen is out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was GMU's <laughs> Omen as well, and I saw Wish with an operator, I'd, I'd move very quickly. Jay is going to throw down his util and Oof. get taken out by Gecko of the Patriots. Vanable will take down Duracell, though, and the trade comes out as Wusa takes out Spad. Wynab is going to get the plant off for the Patriots. Planted. Wish still has that operator. Moving a little slow to sight, seeing this uh, 
slow rotate go on. They had full information that the entire team was there, and they're a little late to react on it. The Wish will take out Winehead with that Operator. Got the Bucky now, and Ooh. he goes down Ooh. with Light Slicer's all. Devin, we talked about this in the pregame. Light Slicer and that Raise all mm -hmm. is damaging the Central. Damaging last time, damaging this time. And it'll go in favor of the Patriots after this spike will detonate. 5 nothing is going to be the score. Definitely think this is a good call from Bannable here. They just got their rifles back and they already lost all of them. He's holding on to one is the best they can do in this situation. Well, the last time these two teams faced off, Bind was the first map. CMU lost that one. Sunset being the second, CMU lost that one as well. Mm -hmm. Both which they started on defense. CMU needs to flip the switch and get on offense first. I think that's the biggest thing here is we, again, chose defense. And clearly that's not working out for them. It's 5 no. to nothing in favor of the Patriots. It definitely feels like CMU is more of an attacker-heavy team, and we can see it in these games like this. Like Every single time we've gone to Lotus, we've been on defense, and other than the last game we just played, it's not gone out too well for us. Well, a quick couple of kills, excuse me, a few kills, but now is CMU will fight back, and Vanable takes his couple, throws out a blind, or excuse me, a smoke. He's going to sit in that for a little bit, and almost takes out Light Slicer. Better aim from the Rays. And Banimal, or excuse me, D Stroganoff is going to have to clutch a 3v1 with a Sheriff. Something that doesn't seem plausible for him, but can be done. And it doesn't work out for him. Duracell with the one-shot headshot takes out Beef Stroganoff. 6-0, George Mason. Got a little bit of a cascade rolling down here. And CMU's got to find their foot against start climbing again. Well, in a game where CMU could end their, have their season ended here, very questionable plays from a few players on this CMU team. Wish with that operator mm -hmm. killing his credits. Well, just right after they've had no money for the first half of these rounds. They've been doing pistol round after pistol round. I don't think that 5K giving that up was a good idea. Haven't gotten a single win, and buying that operator was not the play for him. If he went out that same exact round and still sitting here with a zero wins, that he looks, or excuse me, that credit is going to hurt them. Why not? Takes one on Wish, and Wish is miss missing his shots there. That bomb buddy's going to come out from GMU. Teleporting back is Bannable, trying to reposition himself for some better angles on the Patriots because it looks like a B push here, maybe rotating the C. Yeah, and that's the thing with Lotus. It's just all about information, what picks you got, where the people are on attack. You just wait, try to get the defenders to mess up, try to get them to move forward without making anything, without thinking, really. Well, Jay there to getting taken out by Duracell. Just bad aim on that instant and lo-fi. Taking out Bannable. Last player standing. <laughs> Beef broken off. Planted. Last one alive yet again for the Chippewas. He's gonna have to retreat. Probably gonna just attempt to save here. It would be in their best interest. Six nothing about to be seven nothing. CMU just getting steamrolled and Devin. <laughs> it's only been about 20 minutes. <laughs> And the Chippewas have not gotten a single win yet. It's looking like an exact repeat of the last time these two teams faced. The, I mean, the best we can hope for is to get the ball rolling on attack here. Try to not lose too many rounds on defense. This is an attacker-heavy map, and this is a map that we have done very well on attack before. But defense just seems to be our crux here. Well, being thrown off, picked up one on the Patriots, and then... Gets taken out by Duracell after round to end. And CMU just not hitting any of their shots no. here. We've seen a lot of 1v1s. Here where GMU are. has missed a few as well, but... Yet another save round. Here we are. Yeah, CMU just not playing their best Valorant. And we can clearly see that. They're making poor decisions with their credits. They're missing a lot of shots. And their rotates just aren't fast enough. GMU is steamrolling the Chippewas. In 20 you want to far. play? Let's play. 
But Devin, this map, Lotus, is a very good map to be on defense for, especially when you have the lineup that CNU does. These informative characters, but they're just not playing their best. They're missing shots. And I say that as they take a 5-3 <laughs> beneficiary here on the field. Wish now with the Sheriff. Dirty little judge play right there. Maybe yeah. opening the door here. Just waiting for GMU to start up. Get a little intel. Jay playing passive. Spad with 5 health on the way. Steve Stroganoff. Sitting B. Just in case of a rotate. Lo-Fi and his teammates all clumped together. One good play from a Chippewa could end it for GMU and pick up their first win of the matchup. They know where Wish is. They know where Spad is, and they know where Jay is. It's going to be hard for the Central Michigan Chippewas to outplay this. 3v2 very quickly. Wish forced to rotate back. And just like that, GMU takes the upper hand, yeah. even though they have less players. Beef Stroganoff using the ult, just trying to get one round in to get those credits back. The Sheriff's missing from oh, Wish. No. Three separate shots go out. He's got one in the chamber. Whoosh. Fighting for his life against Beef Stroganoff and CMU has eight health on Beef Stroganoff's end. 19 bullets left in the chamber and he chokes to Woosa. CMU not hitting any of the important shots. That should have been, Devin, a very easy round for the Chippewas to win. And CMU missing almost every shot they had an opportunity with there. Just kind of let it go in the end. That's, uh, that's rough. And they even have the alt out. And it's kind of hard not to get like very rush heavy like that when there's only two people and you have them cornered in like that. But you gotta remember that you can't just take fights without thinking. You have to actually process the information. You can't just let them have these free damage on you. It's never a good sign. Well, GMU is showing they want to make the championship a lot more than the Chippewas right now. And Wish gets an early kill as Wynat takes him out. Omen smoke there blocking the way. Spad. Forced to go around. Like this. It's going to be an A push for the Patriots. Spike already being planted by Light Slicer. Spad has a few good angles with that Omen Smoke playing to a heavy advantage. And the Chippewas had the upper hand there yet again. Spad missing all of his shots. Wynad making it out of that one alive. Jay finally with it now. We apologize for the technical difficulties there. Come back, Steve is gone. <laughs> well, three to two, and or excuse me, two to two now. Very quickly, back in favor. Line goes out. Gecko's util goes down. A pinch now from the Chippewas, and Banimal finishes out low five. Let's go. And the first win for the Chippewas. As <laughs> the spike. Will actually take out Banabal and Jay. They didn't get the defuse off in time. Nine to nothing, Chippewas. Finished them all <laughs> off and didn't get the defuse. That has gotta hurt. You invested all that time in the slowest rotate to finally get the upper hand. You finally clear the enemy team and you just do not have enough time to defuse. I it's so Oh, heartbreaking right there. They really needed that round, too. Well, Central gonna be in a struggle nation now as it's 9 to nothing in favor of the Patriots. They need to make a switch up and they need to make it fast because at the rate this is going, they're gonna get 13 0 very quickly. Mm -hmm. wow, He's broken off. Down. Set up on C, calls for his teammates to rotate, and there is four Chippewas on A. <laughs> And that is just a very bad play from Central. Welcome to my Not spread world. out nearly enough as Viper's ult is going to go up and cause a very, very damaging effect on the Chippewas. No one has died yet in this matchup. Jay clearing a few corners out. He's going to throw a out to try to get some information. 
and he makes the bad decision to push directly in. Usa takes out two there. Wynad takes out bad. Wish takes out Lo-Fi and Beep on Usa, and it's a quick one for or for GMU. It's two left on the field, and it's ten to nothing just like that. This is just brutal. And I believe CMU is the one that picked Lotus as well. Did they? I, I believe so. No, don't quote me on that, but I believe it was them. I think they were hoping to repeat what happened last week, but it looks like the other it looks like George Mason has definitely practiced this map quite a bit. They know the chat the strat on attack and they've demonstrated it very well. Well not a single person for the Chippewas going positive and not a single person for the Patriots going negative. And when that is a factor in the game, Devin, it's clear who's gonna be in the lead. Oh yeah! Almost every Patriot sitting behind that door right there. Gecko's alt is gonna go out there. Spad. Holding that angle takes out one. Oof. Almost takes out two. Jay gets it out on Lo-Fi and a slicer. Remaining. And Wynad Central. Can they take their first win? Or will GMU clutch it up here? No, it will not happen. The Chippewas take one. And the alt gets picked up, or excuse me, the op gets picked up by Wish. Didn't have to buy it that time. You know, they say too little too late, but I think it's very, very important for them to get these wins right now in defense before they go to attack. This is an attacker-heavy map, and if you, every win just gives them a little bit of an inch closer to where they need to be. And it gives them definitely a confidence boost if you, they're playing so, like, not there entirely. It's really tough when you see that, they, that up there 10-0 is just really damaging on your brain. Jay picks up a quick two on low on Duracell. That's gonna help them out. Five to three already. CMU looking to pick up two. Careful now. Tripwire triggered for Beef Stroganoff and a great right hand deep there. And he all goes out for Light Slicer. And that's the first time he's missed. Bomb Buddy out and Wish gets taken out, but he does a little bit of damage to Wusa. He's hurt. And blinded by Bannable. CMU picks up two. Devin, they've got all the momentum now. If they were still on defense, I feel like they'd pick up a few more, but we'll switch sides. CMU is going to go on the attacking front. GMU back on defense. See, that is exactly what I was talking about. They got that little bit of spark, that little bit of hope, and it's enough to carry them through that round. Well, 30 minutes in, and your score is 10-2. to CMU needs quite the comeback if they want to stay in this one. Hey, we've seen it before. And we have seen it before where the opposing team sits at 12 and Central was what, four, three or four, I uh -huh. believe. On this map. On this map specifically. And CMU made quite the comeback, bringing it 11 to 13, that final score. And this time they have a little bit of a cushion, but we're gonna see here if they had have they worked on their pistol rounds like I've talked about in the past. Well, Duracell, no chance he was making it out of that one alive. Jay picks up a quick one. Spad takes out Lo-Fi. CMU has the momentum. Can they continue it? A quick one from Wish. Wish has the right hand peak here. Could win. Bomb Buddy goes in for or for GMU. Light Slicer now with it. A left-handed peak for him. Missed shots from remaining. both people, but Light Slicer will get the quick one. Wusa goes down, however, and it's a four to nothing. Central Michigan on the field. Central definitely feeling it now, getting these kills and getting this money up. It's straight in. And I feel like CMU plays off of the momentum so well. Oh, yeah. When they are losing, they're losing. But when they're winning rounds, they have so much momentum. That team energy is back up there. I think this is a bit of a questionable play here. Yeah, a couple Bulldogs coming out for the Chippewas. This could, this could go very well for them. But Eight. it also could go very poorly in that first round. It doesn't even matter. We'll see how that plays out. Spad blinds the entire GMU team. Takes out one. Takes out two. <laughs> Wish takes out three. It is a three to one. CMU gets taken down, but CMU wins that round overall. And Devin, I lost blinked. a few Bulldogs there. <laughs> I blinked. And CMU picked up that one. Oh, 
Beast is in my Wow. <laughs> Five stack on B. That's crazy. Well, that sky blind Here. hit the entire GMU team. And you could hear it out there. It was just rush, rush. They got in there, picked up one, picked up two, picked up three, and finished the other two off with the pistols. Time to mobilize that my played in CMU's favor tremendously. But here comes the full buys for both teams. 10 to 4, your score in favor of the Patriots. Yeah, that double initiator really worked out for them last round. <laughs> Wish going to hold that B site now. And J down on, on A peaking. He's got the spike. CMU kind of taking a different approach here. Yeah, splitting up a little bit more than usual, Being especially slow. for an attacking sequence. However, it looks like they're going to just try to make some noise on the different sites. Confuse the team a little bit, but Duracell isn't phased. He'll take out Wish and Bannable. That was not a good decision on Central's part. Mm -hmm. That peak is going to hurt him. Jay, still with the spike, however. All three Chippewas remaining sit on A. They do have a cushion, but it's not something you really want to rely on using this early. Viper on C. Couple Patriots on B and two on A. Might be a rotate for the Chippewas, and it's looking like it. 30 seconds left. We're going to go back to C, where Viper remains there. Solo. George Mason's definitely doing a good call here by staying spread out off of those picks. They're not really focusing. They didn't fully rotate based on that solo information that they got. We saw figured out that they were there. Duracell picks up three. Duracell picks up four. Taken out by Spad, but low fight takes him out. And George Mason picks up the 11. We're gonna have to regroup and reset as they lose their first round in a minute. And I say that if we sit here four and eleven, but Oof. Central is gonna have to not let up two wins for the Patriots. That's gonna be a tough ask for them. Bit of a rough one here, but hopefully they can get that mojo back. Hopefully they didn't lose it. Like they see the pistols. It's that econ thing that we would keep talking about, really driving it home. Maybe those Bulldogs. Oh, well, Spad missing three different shots, and Luzo will take him out with the Phantom. Seaside okay. rush for the Chippewas as the Bomb Buddy goes out. Wish just sending some shots in there through the Viper smoke. Nothing hits. Vanable in a tough position here on the smoke. It's going to be a 1v1 battle on Luzo. <laughs> That you was know, sometimes very lucky on smoke her. Satchel out. Which again, just sending more shots in through the smoke. Central probably gonna <laughs> want to rotate here. Lo-Fi has the blind ready at the door. That omen smoke is gonna run out of time. A couple down. trades See. come off for Central. Ooh, the wine ad, just a quick headshot on B Stroganoff. Putting that at 12 to 4. One more win for the Patriots, and mm -hmm. they take round one in the best of three. Here we can see that CMU can finally buy, but the credits are not looking too good. It is definitely caught up to them buying those weapons. Well, in a position like this, you gotta spend what you can right now. And For sure. They're gonna need to take this one. If the Patriots end up winning this round, not only are we headed to Ascent, but they're just one step closer to that championship game. Jay's Thrash Timer is going to go out. Clear the site. He's going to wait for Duracell and Lysolator to come in. Quick couple Ooh. shots off, and CMU's got the upper hand here. Jay's going to get the plant off. CMU looks like they could have this round. Wolf goes out, clears the site. Misses on the blind. But aware that they're there, this should be a win for Central. Lo-fi, wall bangs him, 
Beef Stroganoff needs to clutch up for CMU. The teleport comes off. He's got the right hand peek. A really good advantage here. Omen's gonna get the fake. Sees the teleport. Misses. Too many shots. And Low Five's gonna get the clutch for the second time against CMU. Clutch. And sending them. Defenders to win. Round. First matchup on the rematch between that these is, two teams. That's really tough right there, but. Uh... Definitely needed to start shooting the second he saw that oh, that omen. That was way too much hesitation, especially when you have the phantom in your hands. That is a spray and pray kind of gun. You don't have to follow the same rules as Vandal and holding that fine set of oh I need to but um but um but um instead of da da da. Yeah. It definitely that's awful. Well, we saw CMU make too many of those little mistakes, Devin. It was missing. Way too many shots. There were a lot of 1v1 situations there that should have gone in CMU's favor. They had the upper hand. There were a lot of peaks that they should have won, and just no shots were hit for the Chippewas. It's not something you really think about, but buying those sheriffs over and over again, that is 800 credits per buy, and you are just giving 800 credits every single time you die. Even on a save round, that is... It still adds up, and it definitely added up there. There was a lot more save rounds they had to do. They didn't couldn't just buy. They weren't buying rifle, light shield, or rifle, heavy shield. It was always just two rounds. They could maybe one round they could buy rifles, and then the next it would be another save. And yep. when you don't have the firepower to back up, when you're getting pushed by five people at once, and you just don't have the weapon, there's nothing you can really do there. You can just spray and pray. Literally, we saw with the. Uh, forget the name of the gun but i use it all the time i'm, I'm just blanking on a stinger i think it is yeah specter stinger stinger okay i got you yep yep and and cmu just missing too many shots there we saw wish with that fifth round operator by mm -hmm. a very questionable play but yet again we sit here 13 to 4 when we come back we'll head to ascent for the second matchup this is a do or die for central their season could end and it could continue We'll find out in just a moment. We'll be right back.
back inside the Student Activity Center here in Mount Pleasant. CMU in a do or die situation. They're gonna need this next, next map, which is Ascent. One that we haven't seen them play in a minute. I'm liking the lineup here. It's looking really nice. I think Jets are fine. Yeah, we've got KO now. <laughs> Jay is going to end up playing a duelist. And wish on Sentinel for the first time since I've started watching this. <laughs> yeah, that is not a common occurrence for him. Hey, I mean, it, it's Ascent is a great map for Killjoy. It's a great map for Jet. It's a great map for Sova. They, they've got a pretty strong lineup here. Expe this map has so many like off angles for Jet to get up on. It has so much setup utility for Killjoy. She can just have an entire site locked down by herself. And Sova, I mean, it's she's, he's got that arrow and I don't know. Well, Sova, gonna be a great pick for this map. Usually on Ascent, we'll mm -hmm. see a Sova in the competitive scene, as Taking well as a Jet KO for Spad. That is gonna be a first in a minute. And then Bannable, sticking with that Omen pick. KO, Jet, and Sova coming out as well for GMU, something that you are pretty much bound to see on the Ascent map. I, I, it's just the right characters to play, I mean... I don't know what else to really say about it. Well, the exact same team, besides one. Thirty seconds until the do or die matchup begins for Central Michigan. They need this one to push it to sunset, and GMU needs this one to push themselves to the final matchup in this Valorant League. Yeah, let's see if we can keep track of two objectives a lot better than we can keep track of three. <laughs> well, on paper, it's easier. <laughs> Against GMU, it's harder. Three seconds when we are underway. Here we go. A full push going to the A side. This is a really good me, call from mid George. Could possibly be an A push through those doors, but Vanable gonna sit mid now. KO again. That dagger is so beneficial for Intel. And it is gonna be an A push quickly. Duracell wallbang spad. Couple shots fired and light slicer is gonna get the plant off. That omen smoke on that A entrance is so valuable. Wish gonna sit heaven here. Jay kind of behind enemy lines here. Vanable taking out quickly. Jay on the headshot. Sees light slicer. Gets a couple shots off. Forced to reload. He does not have a dash. He's playing a lot more carefully. He gets one off before going down to Woosa. Wish misses his shot. Woosa's got three. And again, those missed shots from CMU. The nerves get into them. They know that their season ends in 13 rounds if they're not able to pick up their game. So those hands are going to be like, a little shaky. Oh, for sure. That goes and the pistol rounds really aren't their strength to begin with. But yes. CMU really strives in those vandal opportunities where they're able to take the advantage on those little cheeky peaks. <laughs> and when one goes down, it seems like they all go down as soon as Central gets that momentum. But when they don't have the momentum, it is really bad for them. It seems that when one thing goes wrong, everything goes wrong. It's a really all-or-nothing scenario for the Chippewas a lot of the time. Yeah, for sure. Still in that buy phase, we're probably going to see an A push again from mid from the Patriots. It's, it's going to probably be a common occurrence for them. I'd be surprised if they didn't try to fight for this mid control, especially on this map mid. It just happens to be the main driving point for a lot of these Valorant maps is that whoever controls mid controls the map and has easy access to literally any site they want to go to. If something goes wrong at B, bam, you're already at A in less than half a second. Like it is so crucial and such a way to save so much time. It's almost important. 
for any team to just really grasp that mid and hold it. Well, mid is also the site of many operator shots. And again, Devin, I'm not going to be surprised if Wish pulls that out. Fifth or sixth round, but Spad going to 26 out very quickly. Gets a few hostiles suppressed there. Not able to use the util and doesn't pull out his classic before peeking that angle. A very easy mistake to avoid. But again, those nerves get into him. So the star goes planted. out on Bandable during the cage. Very interesting placement for an omen smoke oh. there. It's gonna work for him oh, though, and Duracell picks up two on Wish and Beef. Bandable's gonna be the last one alive, and I mean, not really a point in saving. He's got just a classic. If he did have that blind at the ready though, could have gotten a few shots off and brung their credits down a little bit. Didn't end up happening. GMU takes another early lead. Yeah, not a good look for CMU right now. And as those two rounds, those beginning two rounds are starting to stack up yet again. Here we see George Mason up two from very fast plays, A push. They've gotten that site locked down and they've gotten the picks to back it up. Can CMU bring it back? I hope so, but it's the nerves are getting to them and they just do not have the money half the time. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if I operator see an operator down on the middle. Third round. And there is Jay with the op. Misses the shot. That is gonna hurt. KO is gonna throw out that dagger. Get some suppressing down. Throw some shots out in the middle. Jay is in a very tough situation here. Spad trying to back him up there. He's gonna throw a few shots in. That ends up working. Why not? Kills Duracell with you. KO's own bomb there. Ooh, Spad makes up for that one. Wusan Wynak gets taken out. He'll get traded with Lo-Fi. Two to two. three. That operator still in play. No, it's not. Light Slicer one takes down Jay. Remains. Wish on the trade on the wall bank. And Wish clutches up for the Chippewas. Right. One to two. Don't worry. Sova on the Chippewas will pick up that operator. Probably not going to keep it for himself. Gives it back to Jay. I, I don't think I've seen Beef Drogan off play a single round with an operator. And... When you're uh, sitting in a position that he's in as Sova, an operator really is the best opportunity for you. Yeah, that play in general was very weird to make with an operator. I mean, sometimes you think, oh yes, I have a single shot gun, but in a, well, you have one shot to make it count, and if you don't hand that shot, that SMG is going to tear you to shreds. Well, Jay, back in the same position, forced to back up immediately, quickly blinded, and it is a full... Hard Ooh. rush. Jay takes down Spike. Duracell takes out Jay, though. That judge is going to be huge. No, it is not. Doesn't even get the chance to fire a <laughs> single bullet off. CMU is forced to regroup. It's going to be a hard one for them to win. Has the angle on him. Does kill him. Wish sees Light Slicer. That door is going to go down, though. That's going to really hurt him. Tries to get the wall bang off. Does get it. He's broken off on heaven. Gets taken out by Duracell. 1v3 situation. Wish with the Vandal. Kind gonna go lag. up into heaven. Has the angle. Doesn't get it. Duracell picks up three on that round. GMU, three to one. And it's gonna be hard for CMU to come back. Yeah, they're kind of lacking the utility usage right now. I mean, they have the initiators, and the only time they really use those opening info perks are just right at the start of the round. They don't use them halfway through the round, and it definitely would have helped them out there. Well, CMU was the biggest mistake last round was not only getting shaky and missing their shots, but it was also the lack of util. Mm -hmm. We saw that so many times in the last matchup between CMU and GMU. Not a single util being used round after round after round. It showed again, CMU got demolished on the last round, and it's a back again for CMU. Beast Roganoff is going to set up his shop as Sova on that site. Oh, a quick one from Jay to take out Lofi. Trade in on the hands of Wusa. Duracell on Beef Stroganoff. Three to four in favor of GMU. Cypher's got some intel. Wynad sitting on long. Gets tagged up a few times by the Spectre of Wish. Wish will get quickly Spike taken planted. out along with Bannable by Wynad. Four to one. Spad. Not looking good for him. Gets a shot off on Duracell. Doesn't finish him. And the Phantom. Gonna be his demise as Duracell picks up nine and two on that round. 
Not a single uh, person going positive for the Chippewas yet again, a very common occurrence for us. You could see the panic in Beef Strogan off the second he see he saw five people standing right around that corner, but you Time can't out. panic like that. It's just giving up way too much. You gave up utility, you gave up your position, and you gave up so much space. Sometimes you just really have to hold your location, and you can definitely tell that the fact that they are down so much and on this second map, it's so crucial for us to win these rounds. And it's really getting to them. Well, a quick play by KO and J, the jet on that one. The plan was to get that grenade off, blind them, and then send J in with the ult. Immediately destroyed as GME looks to pick up their fifth. And the biggest thing right now, Devin, is that GME is just making these little mistakes. And we saw last, and the nerves are getting to them. Mm -hmm. Which yep. might be able to clutch here. That omen smoke is going to go out long. I think that rush play was a little bit of a mess up. Maybe they should have sat on that one for a while. Well, we just have to get the planted. plant off. No reload from Wish. Cover going out. Lo-Fi is going to be there. And Woosa. Not going to tag the Cypher yet. Or not going to tag the Wish yet with that Cypher camera. It's a little bit of intel off. Wish might want to just save here. And that looks like exactly what he's going to do. Wait for GMU to come out of their sight so that Spike doesn't end up getting them. Maybe Playing pressing. very smart here. He's going to wait for it. And it works out in his favor. Wish picks up two. And he knew he wasn't winning that one. A very smart decision by Wish. And it worked out. Two kills on that one. He's going to hurt the credits of the Patriots. He picked up his ult there. That's a really good start. Uh, hopefully they can get these rounds rolling. Well, Killjoy is very, very beneficial on a map like Ascent alongside Jet and... And Jay just not playing the best as Jet. No. And we we don't usually see Jay on the Jet. We usually see him on Gecko. And I think that's getting to, to the Chippewas. But they knew that they needed to pull out a random stop. And they tried it. And we see Jay with an operator. Buying those light shields just so he can get his hands on it. Very risky couple peeks though. They're going out. I think it's quite strange that he's just opting to pick from tree instead of from the main entrance. This could be Jay's demise in just a second. It is. Lo-fi, one shot, headshot, takes out that op. CMU not making the smartest financial decisions here with their credits. and Not making the smartest decisions in general. I mean, all he had to do was sit there and hold that peak. He didn't need to get that information. And now they have full control of mid, and they're closing in very fast. Well, what's happening here is CMU, me, GMU knows that CMU likes to play very slow. They like to get those couple peaks off and, and whittle them down one by one. So what GMU did in the very beginning was they played very hard and very fast. That forced CMU to adapt to the play style, also playing hard and fast. Then, as soon as GMU saw the Chippewas moving in like that, they switched it up yet again, started playing slow, and started picking them off one by one. We saw that happen where Jay wanted to play fast and match the play style of the Patriots. It didn't end up working. Omen was able to take that quick peek off on the Chippewas and bring them to 6 and 1. And just another couple bad decisions from the Chippewas will send them in a five, or a, excuse me, yeah, five game deficit here. So Beef Stroganoff falling to the same exact play that he's lost to before, forgetting to really use his util there. I mean, it's it's really tough to being in that situation, but you have an operator that gives you so much information to not save it to those crucial moments where you know you need it and have it wasted right at the start of the map is a really bad idea. You have two initiators, you have two people to find out where they are. You do not need to use that much util. Well, you always love seeing those silver guards go out and Especially in the professional scene, it's really fun to see the lineups that they've just got oh, memorized. Yeah. It's like the left, two inches to the left of this certain cloud, and it'll go in. Wish. Might use the killjoy here. Five left. I think he's going to wait. Very bad peak from Wish again. Why not take him out? Along the wall bang on Jay. 
Vanable, not really anything to give up here. If you only have a Shara, one shot headshot, takes down Duracell, gets rid of the credits for him. Wusat takes him out though, with the Phantom along the way, in tree room. Timeout for the Chippewas. Again, we see them on defense, the and it's again. not working for him. Che again buying the op, 250 credits left. It's not worked out the past three times you've used it. I don't know why he's going for it again. Sometimes you just got to let the ego drop. I mean, a phantom here with Jet just running it down would be ten times better than buying that operator and save so much more eco. Here we are again. You have to, at this point, we've seen how many pistol rounds because they keep buying these full buys and these weapons and... I don't think it's working out for them all that well, do you? No, absolutely not. And the biggest thing, Devin, is when one person on your team will buy that operator, if you lose them, it's going to hurt everyone's ego. It's not just going to hurt yours because a five on four creates such a big advantage for the other team. They're able to pinch one of those players, bring it to a five on three, and then it's just kill after kill after kill. We've seen GMU take advantage of that mm -hmm. time after time. Again, we saw that in the round where Jay had an operator last. Quick picked him off in mid, controlled the mid, and was able to just take A from there. It didn't work out in the Chippewa's favor. And GMU's not even picking it up half the time. Exactly, because they know that the Vandal is going to be more beneficial here. They're not controlling mid like we thought they were going to. Mm -hmm. They're playing slow, waiting for CMU to rush in and make the first mistake. And CMU not adapting. They're not seeing what's coming. Bad and Jay gonna play slow here. Knows that Omen is near. George Mason looking a little spread out here. And CMU looking to set up a little better. Jay gets that quick one on Duracell. That's huge for them. That is what I'm talking about. That is why Jet is so good on this map. You get those little off angles that people can't expect because just that passive ability to flutter jump. Now Jet, one of the original characters of Valorant, I know just exactly playing where you phenomenal. Are. And and when you have such a, or a character that's been in for such a long time, you're able to develop and use different strategies. And you have got so much time over newer players like Gecko. And then all coming from Keith Stroganoff here. Not exactly sure why. He's gonna throw out his dart, or excuse me, his recon drone here. Look on site, and I'm not exactly sure why the recon drone wasn't sent out first to see if there were people. He's gonna get hit from Sova's alt and light slicer. Takes a one enemy remaining. It should be a CMU win still on this round at least. However, Devin, that Sova ult was very questionable. I, I mean, hey, we all make mistakes sometimes, and I, I, maybe he thought that because he was so close that they were all on site, but even then, you are Sova, and you can get that information. I mean, it's a really rough Wait, round. They've been so down so much. It's Mistakes are bound to happen, and I mean, one like that's very costly, unfortunately. Yeah, well, with Sova, another original character, you've got so many times to, or so much time to develop those strategies. Like we said earlier, it's really fun to see those recon darts go out, and it's crazy to see how many they come up with. It would have been beneficial in that instance for a recon dart or that recon drone to go out, see that there are players mm -hmm. on site, and then use the alt. Unfortunately, he might have just left shifted there, accidentally clicked it a little too early, bringing it out, but he chose to finish it off. We'll see how this plays out. Vanable definitely gonna pick up one there on Duracell. That's huge for him. The jet goes down. Light Slicer is super, super low. Spat, Mofi and Wynad on the way. J takes out Wusa. One left for GMU. If CMU doesn't win this round, I really don't know what to say, Devin. It should end up being 7-3. and three. Light Slicer, very low health and wish. The zoom in takeout on Light Slicer. Flawless for the defense there. CMU really needed that one. And we haven't seen Killjoy use his ult yet. And Wish is used to using those utils from more people like Jet or more people like Raids. And it's just not coming out right now. 
bit of a rough one, but we are starting to find our feet here on defense. Hopefully we can get enough rounds to make it actually matter going into the second half. Eco looking a lot better, but if CMU buys that ult again, Jazz, excuse me, Jay takes out a quick one on lo-fi. If CMU buys that ult or excuse me, that operator again, it's going to be so detrimental for him. Yeah. It's not worked in the past. And it's not going to work in the future. Duracell on Jake. Spad on Duracell. The quick trade. Spad's going to get hit. Takes a quick dagger out to see if he's there still. That energy dart coming in on Light Slicer. Omen. With that very cheeky peek for the Chippewas. That's where they'll get you. Wynaz going to rotate through center field. Wusa now on the way on A. Gonna take a couple peeks, see if there's anybody heaven. There's not. Gonna wait for his teammate to rotate in. Light Slicer and Wusa looking for a quick pinch here. Spat is gonna be able to take him out. No, he's not. Omen could quick flank this. Recon Dart goes out. Bannable knows. Ooh. Oh, and a backboard play. Doesn't take out Bannable. He's not ready for it. Light Slicer goes down. But, why not? Gonna get the plant off. Beef Stroganoff gonna rotate heaven here. Bannable down the way in a tree room again. Right hand peek takes out why not? Very good play by him. Wish on heaven alongside Bannable. Bannable throws out that util. Bannable picks up three on that Very one. Nice Beef Stroganoff's gonna Bannable. get the defuse. And Wish still with that killjoy. That's gonna be huge in an upcoming round, Devin, if... GMU gets a plant off and that killjoy Last goes down. It is going to be switch. so hard for CMU or for GMU to stop that. Is if the spike is planted behind a solid barrier, it's going to be really hard for GMU to get in there past that killjoy. Oh, yeah, here we see a lot of all work combos. For really, I'm looking to see some of these go out here on this round. But... Uh, they really like holding on to it. Get out of my way! Recon Dart going out. Oh, and it's gonna be a Beast Stroganoff versus Duracell matchup. Where Silva will win that one. Recon Dart goes out. Hits Bannable. They know where he is. A full out attack for Patriots and Chippewas. Again, everyone on the CMU team with an ult besides Silva. In a 5v4 situation, no need to really rush those. Bit of a misplay, not going for that mid control and staying firmly planted on A. Let's see if it works out for CMU. It's yeah. a bit strange. GMU could take a quick flank on CMU with that mid control. Except Spad gonna hold that angle there. Might take one on Musa. Let's see how that plays out. The recon is there. Vanable is suppressed by Teo. Light Slicer sending shots into the smoke. Spad getting hit. GMU got the advantage here, even with numbers. On the reload. Nothing works for him. And he goes down and missed his ult. Oof, that was Quick so lucky. plays by GMU. Jay's gonna get one on Wynab before he gets traded. Left. No res on the KO? No res on the KO. I this know exactly what Might be a hard play for him. He goes down. Lusa's got three. Light Slicer gets the plant off. See, bunched up, going through heaven. Bannable and B Stroganoff. Not very healthy. Last player standing. Ooh, Wusa. Wallbang. Could get an ace here. Ace. He does. That is the second ace for GMU. And the Chippewas go down. Getting their Switching score sides. doubled thus far in game number two. I hate to say it, but okay, George Slicer. Mason played a really good round there. They had their plan from the very start. They were all ready to go on B, but the second they realized it was not a good type, they switched her up, they went straight through mid, they hit A very fast, very hard. Very well, coordinated team. It seems like they play almost better when they're down mm -hmm. on the numbers, and it seems like they rally together a little harder, so we'll switch sides here. Head back to a pistol round. CMU is going to need a very large attacking side here. Better position than they were in the other game, though, to be honest. Very much better than they were in the other game. I don't even... They did not get past four <laughs> wins in the other game. So they get one round here, and they're already doing better. Could be a quick one. As Wish takes out Wusa. Light Slicer on the trade. Jay takes out Duracell. 4v3. Chippewas have numbers. 
jet burning E here. Really a game of slowness and peaking right now as we switch sides. That omen smoke's gonna go out. Bamble takes it out on the classic. Lo-fi goes down. Well, Spad's gonna get going in play his right dagger there. out and try to get some recon. Why not? Is now gonna play around side A. Bannable holding that angle. Sees Light Slicer, he goes down. 2v3. Spike is down. Jay's gonna sit on top of that box. A very good place for Jet to sit. <laughs> Wish with that angle on the back sights of B. Light Slicer aware of where they are. Not a good pickup. Last player standing. Ooh, it takes down Wynad. It'll be hard for Light Slicer to 3v2 that or 3v1 this. Jay. Quick takes him out. Um that was Devin a much needed round for the Chippewas, bringing it to five and eight. Yeah, might, played very well there. They played so many of these pistol rounds, they finally decided to buy that classic light shield, and they were not ready for the shields. Getting those extra hits off with the classic is very damaging when you're running the ghost. The ghost is not very good at close range. I have to say, that's a pretty good play from CMU. Though. Well, finally learning, to, as you said, in the intermission, not take the sheriff. Those 800 creds add up because you or you take two of those rounds with the sheriffs on the quote-unquote save buys and you've just spent 1,600 credits that you're not getting back. That's not even mentioning util buys. That is 800 credits for the gun alone. Beef strong enough. Going to get his recon dart lined up. Placing storm grenade. GMU mainly on A and GMU is just going to rush in here. What? On earth? Well, it seemed like they thought that GMU was all over B, but there wasn't a soul. Spike planted. Oh, four <laughs> Patriots gonna rush from the back of B. He's broken off. Like gonna get some recon off. Uh, this could go very bad very quickly for the Patriots. Ooh, it does. It's B broken off. Takes out two with his shock dart. And two honest, other Chippewas will finish the rest of the Patriots off. CMU playing like this is their best map right now. I'm thinking that was a bit of a miscommunication. I'm not going to lie. That was a full team walk to try to circle around an A push. But there was just nobody there. B site had not a soul on it. That was just a free... Oh. Well, usually, Devin, when you control mid on this map, you control the game, but when you don't even have a <laughs> single teammate that's on B site, clearly you're going to get punished for it. Oh, Chip was yeah. played that like they thought somebody was on B. They threw out a lot of util there, a lot of recon, and were a little confused to see that there was not a single soul there. Knocking on the door, no one's home. So they'll take the advantage of... Not having a soul there, it's a lot easier to plant when you're not getting shot at, Devin, and I they take the advantage there. Looks more like a defending round. Jay against KO here through that smoke. Wynad has that peak. Jay, or, yeah, Jay unaware of it being there. Not oh, make a that wall bait from Wynad. Jay didn't hit his shots. Five on four. Duracell takes out Spat. Five on three. Again, that Sheriff... On Bannable, however, he's got a Vandal. Didn't buy that one. He's got to watch that angle. Last player oh, standing. and this is going to be a 5 on 1. CMU's not going to be able to take Long. this one. Yep. 5 nothing. 9 to 6. CMU had a little bit of momentum there. They've still got good eco. And I, I say good. They've got decent eco right now. Yeah, after buys, look a little shaky. Yeah. On top. I'm seeing that. Phantom buy on the J that I mentioned earlier for... Well, never mind. I think he can hear me, apparently. <laughs> well, usually when Jet buys a Phantom, it's going to be, I'm rushing in and I'm using my ult and I need, uh, at least three of you are going down with me. And... Hey, if there was any map to do that on, I think this is Jet's strongest map. Ascent being my personal favorite map, Jet is really one to look out for when your jet 
And he's going to rush in there. A risky play. Will it pay off? Looking like it. Three on Heaven's head is going to have a very nice angle there. Gets damaged. Wusa takes him out, though. Jade. Now with the Bannable on Wynat. Wusa on Witch. Oh, and a lot of kills come out. A lot of miscommunications here. Oof. Oh. Wusa picks up four on that one. We've seen him ace when we've seen him pick up four a couple times now. That was a really messy round right there. Yeah, a very risky play for Jay to just kind of dash in there a couple times, sit on top of that box, and wait for GMU to rush in. Didn't work out in their favor. CMU is going to have to go with a half save round and lo-fi on the Patriots. With that operator, we don't usually see Omen with operators. We're going to see how that one plays out. Hey, that shadow step can be a pretty nasty, not going to lie. Uh, that shadow step in the previous game that Central took to get to the semifinals was very nasty. <laughs> shadow stepping into that Viper Smoke, taking out two. Here we sit in the semifinal. Jay dashes in one health. So lucky that he's alive. He no heals for the Chippewa, so he'll stick at one health. This is going to be a very messy round yet again. Spad going to get the plant off. Chippewa's holding as many angles as they can. Lusa on Wish takes him out. Why not on Vanimal? Takes him out. He's struggling off. Getting a couple shot darts off. Presence is detected by... The Patriots, not exactly sure what is happening right now, but Jay, <laughs> sitting in the back corner with one health, gets taken out. It's a 1v2. No, it's a 1 or a 2v nothing. is going to get the defuse 11 to 6. Bit of a misplay holding that back angle. I mean, I know you're 1 HP, but you do not have the weapons to play that long. That gun that they had right there is a upfront and personal gun. That is basically a shotgun. Lo-Fi is going to stick with the op. Didn't die last round. He'll keep it. Two more wins, and GMU moves on to the finals. GMU hurting on creds, but they do got a few alts, so let's see if they can get any tricky plays down. They really need some good coordination if they want to squeak these rounds out. That Killjoy alt not used a single time this game. Could have been very beneficial for the Chippewas. And it's going to have to start being played, or else... CMU is going to be in a bit of trouble. Playing a little bit of CSGO here. And it's a quick advantage for the Patriots. As there are two operators in play. Why not? Light Slice has taken out that. This is going to be a tough one for the Chippewas to come back from. Jay takes out Light Slicer. This is a must win for them. Jay takes out three. This is winnable for the Chippewas. It's been done. CNU. I was just about to say something about that util. All those deaths could have been prevented from a little bit of util usage. And then the final moment, it clicked in their minds when it mattered the most. That blind going out, those smokes, those dashes that was that was really good well cmu's got to continue that play style they've really got to keep it up because one more win for gmu and cmu is going to be in do or die scenario for their entire season on the line that's going to prevent them from playing at their best we've seen it all matchup it's when they're in those do or die scenarios and they're not at their best the ball is going to go quickly out for that jay is going to be going in now 19 health one hit from him and he's done. The Odin comes out oh. with the Chippewa's end. Oh, why not? On Spad. Life Slicer on Jay. It's going to be a tough one for GMU or a tough one for CMU to come back from. The Rez tried to come out and it didn't end up working. CMU on GMU. 4v, possibly 2. Chaos goes down. Life Slicer also takes out Witch. Wusa on Bannable. That was a blink of an eye win for GMU. One more in there in the finals. CMU could go down. 
This could be a season ender for him. Seeing he needs to buy as much as possible here. They don't have the credits to do so. They have not been getting the kills. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I've seen a single flash from oh. KO this entire game. They tried it the one play where Jet went in and Jay tried to use his all rush in and immediately take it out. It's just, Devin, way. when you're in a position where it's do or die and you make that last minute switch up to play people like KO, to play, have Jet switch from Gecko to Jet, it's not going to not gonna work out in their favor. They're not playing their best characters. It's clearly showing the 7 to 2 or 7 to 12 deficit. And do or die scenario, Jay with his ult. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Killjoy ult you comes out run. here as well. It's must needed. It does. Oof. Ooh, Duracell on Bannable. That is painful. I'm gonna be honest, I think the Killjoy ult came out a little too early here. Ah, yeah, Beast Rogan off on Duracell. Trade on Wish. Jay takes out Wynad with the ult. Still got a few knives remaining. They have Beast Sight locked down. Plant's gonna come out soon. It does. Smad down the long sight. He's stroking off with Recon. Doesn't get anywhere. 3v3. CMU has to win this one or their season is over. Do or die scenario for GMU to go to the finals. For CMU to stay in it. Three knives left. Lo-Fi coming up now on Jay. Blinded Jet throws down her smoke to stay alive. One goes down at the hands of Beast Stroganoff. Traded on Wusa. Nice go out. One left for Jay. Misses, misses it. Don't down at the hands of Light Slicer. It is a 1v1 scenario for the season. And Spad keeps them alive. <sighs> Gotta throw away your pride sometime. Pulling out that Ares is definitely a questionable morality play. But when you're down this much, sometimes... You just gotta go with it. Well, we've seen the CMU get faced up against an Odin. <laughs> they had one last season, round. And it did happen last round where Lo-Fi... Lo-Fi's been making some questionable decisions, bringing out an Odin, bringing out an Operator. It's worked for him a couple times, mm -hmm. so and that's what's put GMU in this position with Rusa running 25 and 10 this second game as Cypher. <laughs> Duelist making amazing Another space. Another play here, very questionable one. Doesn't go in their favor. Five to three. That was a really bad decision from the Chippewas. Duracell's gonna rush in here now and get taken out by B. Stroganoff. That's super helpful for them. Four on three. Lo-Fi goes down at Wish. Three v three. This is gonna be a very hard one for seeing you to come back from. But it is still winnable. Beef stroking off at 85. Yeah, a bit of a tough string of luck right there. I mean, I, as a duelist, you you go in, you make that space. You just have to pray that your team's behind you. And CMU was not with the game plan there. They just held back and left him out in the open. There's not much you can do after that. You did your job, and the people did not follow up. The people that you're trying to trust. It, that's really rough situation. Not exactly sure why Jay did rush in there. It was a very tough decision and a tough call on his left. part. He rushed in, didn't get it off. It didn't work for him last time. Wish is going to just be forced to make the noise to break that glass. It's going to happen. Wusa now in tree room. Right behind Chippewas. They're unaware of it. Beast Stroganoff gets taken down. down. It's going to be a tough one. 15 seconds left to play. They've got to rush in. Ooh. Wish on... Why not? 10, Ten seconds, seconds left for the season to go. Bannable has got to just get it off. It's planted. Three seconds remaining for him. They see Vice Lakers. Like Blind goes out. He's got a flank. Last person for the season. And it's over for the Chippewas. Light Slicer clutches up not one but twice. He'll get the defuse. Sending the Patriots to the finals and ending the season for the Central Michigan Chippewas. Win. It's really tough being in those situations, being in those hallways like that. Even if you haven't smoked, I mean, there's only one place you can really be. And at the end of the day, might as well just shoot through it. Well, another tough loss for the Chippewas. They lose not once, but twice to this team on the season. Mm -hmm. And you really got to hand it to GMU. They're a tough team to go against, and they play very, very well under pressure. CMU... 
can't say the same for him. It's very hard for them to play under pressure. Their nervousness gets to them time after time after time. Yeah. And that'll do it Especially. for the CMU 2023-2024 Valorant Esports season. Devin, key takeaways from the game. CMU buckled under the pressure. I mean, they were a very coordinated t enemy team. They had plans. They have stuck with them. They knew how to use their utility correctly. They managed their money a lot better than we did. They had constantly better weapons at all point of the game. There was not a single moment except for in that last section right there where they at all had to buy a save round. The entire game. Yeah. It's, it's very unfortunate for the Chippewas, especially in that circumstance, and it's going to be a tough one to come back from, but hopefully next season goes a little bit better for them. GMU, just a yeah. really hard team to play against, so wish them the best of luck in the finals as they will head there to face the winner of another tough matchup that the Chippewas have played both teams earlier in the season, winning one, losing one in that instance. Well... Devin, Sunset actually would have been a pretty interesting map oh, to see both of these sure. teams go against on that aspect. But, again, didn't work out for the Chippewas. Their season comes to a close. So with that, for Parker Morrison and Devin Everwards, we say thank you for watching. And we will be right back with an interview with the Central Michigan Chippewa. And we'll finish that up right after this when we come back. back inside the Student Activities Center. My name is Park Morrison alongside Vanable. Well, did end up losing today, not getting the win, but again, not anything to be ashamed of That's as it. longest stretch for the Valorant team in program history. Got to the semis and in a tough fought battle last week as well. Didn't get the win today, but talk us through kind of what was going through your head in the first game, trying to come back and didn't end up getting it what went wrong for you guys there? Yeah, first game was pretty tough. Um, we picked it. We expected it to do well. We, you know, we kind of looked and see what map isn't great for them. Um, I think we just kind of got off to a wrong foot, pissed around. We, uh, we lost a 2v1 that's rough. Kind of hurt the mental throughout it. Um, for the rest of the half, kind of kept through. We thought we could bring it back in the second um, second half, but it just... We couldn't, we couldn't get a read on what they were doing, and uh, we just weren't, we weren't comfortable. We weren't warmed up yet, you know? Yeah, well, second game went a little better in the beginning. You guys were able to take, I believe it was a 6 and 8 deficit still were down but the momentum was there you guys lost a pissed around and then it went downhill from there talk me through kind of what was going through the comms what was going through your guys's head in that instant you know we uh just came off of a map loss you know a really bad map loss it was i think one to four um, on a set and i you know we, we stopped and said listen we need to we need to lock in we need to play the game doesn't matter last game um we dealt with some lag issues pissed around which i think really had, was a problem for us, but uh, we brought it back. It's a map that we've played for a long time, and we uh, we were confident that we could still play the map. We made it a one, but I think we played some good Valorant, and uh, we, we changed up some things that we wouldn't normally change up, so I'm happy with how we performed. Absolutely. Nothing to be ashamed of, as, again, 
Program history was made today and last week as we made it to the semifinals, but hopefully a better season to come next year. This program is only growing, and we hope to continue that. So congratulations, number one, for making it this far and for the season Thank as you. a whole. But we will be back next season for another round of Valorant. Hope to continue such an amazing stretch of this program, just continuously making history. So again, congratulations for you and the entire team, even though it was a loss. Doesn't matter as program history was made. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. My name is Parker Morrison, alongside my tag team partner, Devin Edwards, for the game and Bannable, and the rest of the Valorant team, and for Central Michigan Esports, we say so long. Thank you for tuning in to the 23-24 season, and we'll see you next year. No hard feet. Cage triggered. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. Thank you.